just talk about what the sun actually does right now. How is it generating energy? Well, we start off with two um, hydrogen nuclei, or protons in other words, because I think hopefully we all know a hydrogen atom is one proton and one electron. Now, in the sun, it's so hot, the electrons are separated from the protons, so we're only talking about the protons. So we have two protons. It's hot enough and the pressure's high enough for, the, for them to actually combine and form what we call deuterium, which is one proton and one neutron. And then we can add another proton and we get helium-3. And this is nuclear fusion, which requires very high temperatures, very high densities, enormous pressure. Now, we just repeat that process, so we've got two helium-3 nuclei there, and then they can combine, and we get helium-4, which is the, the regular form of helium, and we get two of the protons back. That's basically what's happening inside the sun. It's a very, um, although the amount of energy the sun puts out is huge, on a volume basis it's quite small. Um, I was only re reading the other day, the, the sun's energy output on a vo you know, per cubic metre is no higher than your compost heap, if you've got one. Or if you imagine um, the cupboard under the stairs with a 60 watt light bulb in it, the cupboard under, under the stairs is about a cubic metre. The sun only produces about uh, you know, 60 watts per cubic metre. But because the sun is very big, the core of the sun is very big, so the total amount of energy it chucks out is colossal. Um, but it's actually quite a sort of low rate of energy per cubic metre, which is one of the reasons why the sun will, carry, uh, you know, will last 10 billion years. Um, just, but it's very, very big. Now, stars that are bigger or bluer, um, the two things that uh, go together, the more massive star, lovely image of the Pleiades, you can actually see this, uh, not like that, but you can see the little tiny constellation in the sky, sort of to the, um, if you're looking at Orion, it's sort of to the right, but anyway. Um, these are big stars, they're blue stars, and uh, big stars bigger than our sun use this process. I'm not going to dwell on it because of time, but basically you, it uses carbon and you add protons through these state steps and you end up getting a helium, helium nucleus pop out and you get back to the original carbon atom. So uh, it's, um, it's quite an efficient process but it needs higher temperatures and pressures than our sun's got. But, so bigger stars use this process. <coughs> but very big stars have a much more interesting life. Um, here we're looking at a, a star, a 15 solar mass star. So it's got 15 times the mass of our sun. It's got to the end of, of its main sequence. So it's, it's just about fused all the hydrogen it can in its core to helium. And just like our sun, at that point, it then the core will collapse and the outer layers swell up. And in this case, it becomes a red giant, a super red giant, um, and its radius is 500 times the radius of the Sun. So that it swells up to a very big object. But then, because it's so large and it's got 15 solar masses, the temperature at the core becomes hot enough for helium to start burning into carbon and oxygen. So then the, this is the next step. And in actual fact, hydrogen burning to helium carries on in a shell around the helium core. And you can see we're down to six solar radiuses here in this helium core. Um, I'll just go back. Just draw your attention. For these supergiant stars, the hydrogen burning phase is just 10 million years. Our Earth is going to take our sun 10 billion years to burn all the hydrogen it can. A supergiant like this will burn all the hydrogen it can in 10 million years. So these stars live in the fast lane. They have very short lives. So this, that second stage of burning helium to carbon and oxygen is just a million years. And what you'll notice here, that here you'll see the temperature is going up each time. So when, once all the helium has been burnt, the core collapses further, the temperature goes up, the density goes up, 
and then carbon burns to neon and magnesium. 600 years. So the process is getting shorter, partly because we've got less and less material to play with in the core. And this process continues, and then the neon burns to oxygen and magnesium, um, and only takes only lasts for a year. But what you see here, these shells around the, it's a bit like an onion as you peel the layers. As the star progresses through this sequence, the different layers beyond the core are carrying on burning the other elements. But the process carries on, and then oxygen burns to silicon, six months, temperatures even higher, and then the final stage um, is where silicon burns to iron and nickel. And when you get that stage, it lasts for just a day, roughly. So this star um, has a very short life, because if you add up all those times, it's only about 11 million years, or 11 million 600 and a bit. So big, this is only 15 solar masses, and stars um, can go to 50 solar masses and more. So the bigger they are, the faster they live their lives. Now what goes on on the outside? So while all that's going on in the star, because it's swollen up into a super red giant, and in these latter stages, which are only sort of, sort of a few hundreds of years, the outer layers of the star have been pushed out, it's swollen right up. Um, the various elements that are being fused and created in the star are getting mixed up. As you go further out, the temperatures drop, and molecules can form. And on the outer reaches, and we're going out to a distance, something like Jupiter's orbit, orbit these are really big objects, um, the molecules can get big enough and start forming dust particles. So all these reactions going on in the core of these stars start producing all the elements that we are familiar with in the periodic table. Carbon, oxygen, silicon, sulfur, magnesium, etc. Um, one of the processes that goes on is this one where helium nuclei combine to form carbon. And in fact, this process continues. You can then add another helium nuclei to this and you can form the next element. So you're working your way up the periodic table, making all the different elements that we're familiar with that are in the universe. There's another process, I'm not going to dwell on it, but neutrons get captured by some of these nuclei and they create the elements in between those gaps so that all the elements up to iron and nickel get formed in these big stars. And just to summarise here, so I'm beginning to run out of time, um, these are the masses of stars from 10% of the sun up to 40 times the mass of the star. <coughs> There's our sun, 10 billion years. Smaller stars live for even longer. But these really big stars, well, they live for just a few million years. So very short, fast lives. And yet they're the ones that put a lot of material into the interstellar medium. <coughs>